Um, I think like you really just want to be in the best place that you can be studying the subject that you really love to study. And whether that is Cambridge or whether that's another university for you, I think if you really want to do it, if you really want to study there and you can imagine yourself there, then you should just go for it. There's nothing stopping you. Welcome to Frank's Day Unexplained. Today's topic is what's it like getting admitted to Cambridge and how do you do it? We speak with Elizabeth, a brilliant young woman who just received an offer from Trinity College to come and study computer science at Cambridge. If you enjoy computing and you're good at it, you will enjoy hearing how it worked out for her. And I hope she will inspire you to apply as well. Stick a thumbs up on her video if you like her story and subscribe to this channel for more. There's a whole playlist of interviews for you to enjoy. Hello, so this is uh, my pleasure now to welcome Elizabeth Ho to the channel. And she has just received an acceptance letter from Trinity. I first met Elizabeth uh, a few months ago in December uh, online, still only online. We do the interviews online because of COVID. And I was very impressed by her. We sent her uh, an offer and she's just received it. And I want to hear from her what this all felt like. So just say a few words about yourself, Elizabeth, first of all. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Elizabeth Ho and I'm from Westminster School. And um, I'm currently year 13, studying my A-levels. And in my free time, I like to read, to write, and do theater lighting. Yeah. Hmm. So you uh, applied for computer science, OK? Um, it is still, unfortunately, somewhat uncommon for girls to do computer science as opposed to boys. Uh, and we are trying to encourage other girls to say, this is actually really cool. Look at how many. Uh, uh, how many smart and, and uh, successful people uh, are doing that, and you could be one of them. Uh, how old were you when you first programmed a computer? Um, I was year six, actually, when I first tried programming. And that was when my math teacher, like she gave us um, two periods to do like Khan Academy's Hour of Code program. So we spent one hour just coding. And like that was it in the curriculum. But then after that, I enjoyed it so much that like when I went home, I continued to do that course until like I finished the beginner's course. Yeah, so that was my first kind of interaction with coding and it was really, really positive. That's so that was how I started, yeah. That's great. And uh, so what language were you programming in? Um, I think it was some version of like JavaScript, but not like actual JavaScript. It was like Khan Academy's own type of JavaScript. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and so that, that was a first experience that was positive for you. At which point did this start becoming not just something you like to do at school, but something that you wanted to uh, make a career out of and decide to go to university doing computer science and all that stuff? I think I took uh, IGCSE computer science. And then so I learned Python over there. And then I used Python in my free time to kind of code like small little things that I really wanted, but I didn't know how to get like, for example, like when my favorite web novel would update, then I coded like a web scraper that would email me when there was an update on the website, things like that. Or like um, I would code like a small snippet that would like change my wallpaper every five minutes and add my favorite code on it. I actually still have it on my laptop right now. So like things like that, that really made me feel like programming was something that was really useful, something I really enjoyed. And yeah, I think just experiences like that, that gradually piled up to something that I really want to do in the future. Yeah. That's great. Uh, did you have anyone around you who was programming? Did you have brothers and sisters who were already experts? Um, not really, actually. Like my sister, she did medicine. So she wasn't really a, a tech person. And my dad, he did um, IT, like a bit of IT when he was younger. But then like, and he really encouraged me actually, when I did programming, he would always be like, oh, good job, you're doing programming, things like that. So I think that was actually a pretty big encouragement from, from my father's side, yeah. Nice, nice to hear. Uh, what made you apply to Cambridge specifically as opposed to many other places where you could have done computer science? Um, I, 
I mean, Cambridge isn't the only uni I applied to, obviously. But like, I think uh, one big thing that really attracted me to Cambridge is like it's mix of theory and practical. So like all universities, they do a bit of theory, a bit of practical. But Cambridge's balance of theory and practical was like a proportionate ratio that I really liked. And like in year four, they also have um, like research preparation, which is pretty unique in terms of like computer science. Like most other unis, they have like industrial preparation or like um, internships, things like that. But I think the focus on research, especially in year four, is something that I really like. And because I want, I think I want to do research in the future. So Cambridge is really appealing to me in that respect. Yeah. That's great. So we find that uh, a number of uh, uh, very worthy young people are scared of a place like Cambridge because it has this reputation of being elitist and only taking people from certain backgrounds. Now, what uh, what was your feeling and uh, what encouraged you to apply? Um, I think like you really just want to be in the best place that you can be studying the subject that you really love to study. And whether that is Cambridge or whether that's another university for you, I think if you really want to do it, if you really want to study there and you can imagine yourself there, then you should just go for it. There's nothing stopping you. Yeah. yeah well, I, I certainly subscribe to what you say. And that, that's the message that I want to send out. I mean, we don't care where you went to school. We don't care what you look like. We don't care your gender, your race, your language, and so on and so on. So long as you're good, that's the place for you. If, if you, this is a place for, the best people. If you are one of them, wherever you happen to come from, then fine. Now I find sometimes even when I say that, ah, oh, he said only people who are the best. Am I the best? And people start worrying about whether they're, they're the best and maybe don't don't believe in themselves enough. Now you've obviously gone validation. You got validation from us that we believe you're one of the best. Uh, and how do you think people should think about it before they 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 get this acceptance letter you just got? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. But also, I feel like, like from Cambridge's perspective, you can accept the best people. But from our perspective, like the students' perspective, it doesn't really matter to us. Like we just want to apply, we want to get in. But like all that matters is that we like the subject, we want to study it, and Cambridge we think is one of the best places to go to. So. I think that in alone is enough reason for someone to apply. Whether you get accepted or not isn't something you can control. So like, I don't think you should think about it in terms of, oh, I'm not smart enough or, oh, what if Cambridge doesn't accept me? Because you applying is something that you can control while whether you get accepted isn't something that you can control. So like all you have to do is just apply and not think about anything else really. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's a good advice because if you don't start by believing in yourself then even if you were obviously good enough if you haven't applied you'll never be admitted so yeah. yes yeah, I, I fully agree with your your suggestion now you did apply and you applied out of 31 colleges you applied specifically to mine to trinity uh, what made yeah. you choose trinity um it's quite a lot of reasons so like well, number one trinity is really big and like i think that having friends that are doing computer science with me at Trinity is something that I would really like because like let's say Trinity accepts about maybe 10 to 12 people a year right so like even when I get to year three year four when there are like specialized modules and things like that like I'll still have at least maybe one or two people that are doing the same course with me and I feel like just having a friend that you can rely on that you can talk to that you can discuss things with is really valuable so that's why I chose a really big college like Trinity yeah and also in terms of um, resources like Trinity has three director of studies for computer science which is obviously like quite a lot more than than some other colleges do so that's also a really big thing for me yeah yeah so Trinity uh, another distinguisher of Trinity is that uh, Trinity is one of the few colleges that require you to do an extra test yeah. on top of the various admission things and so on and the uh, team you uh, you also have to do the CSAT at Trinity and at a few other places now some applicants avoid Trinity especially because it has this extra test and say I, I'd rather you know I have plenty of stress and worry about all the other stuff I don't want to add one more thing why did this not put you off 
I think CSAT is a good opportunity actually for you to show the things that you're good at. In the CSAT, so there are 12 questions and you choose six out of 12 to do, right? And so like, I think the questions you choose are really important in that you have to choose the ones that number one, you think you're good at, but number two, that you really enjoy doing. So for me, it's like, I like the logic and proof questions. I don't really like like graphs and calculus and things like that. So I kind of like avoided the calculus questions and focus on the logic and proof questions, which I know I enjoy and I know that I'm good at. So the CSAT gives you an opportunity to show your strengths, which is one really, really good thing in that like, it doesn't really feel like an exam per se in that like you're still doing the test, but you're also just doing some really, really interesting questions. Yeah. Yes, it is a, an explicit design feature of the CSAT that there are so many different things that nobody would be able to do all the questions because we want to have a variety of topics uh, such that uh, even if people coming from anywhere in the world have done different things at school, there will always be something that you have done in your school, even if you have done, haven't done some other thing. And you can choose which one to answer based on your competence. So it's a way of kind of leveling the, the field with respect to, oh, but I haven't done this part of calculus. Uh, uh, oh, but I haven't done this other part of computer science. You can choose whatever you want to answer. So in that sense, we think it's good to have difficult questions, but you can choose the difficult question that's enjoyable for you. Yeah, yeah. Like something that you're good at and you know you enjoy doing, yeah. Yes. So, so was it was it hard? Was it harder than you expected? Was it actually? Did you breeze through? Uh, yeah, it was definitely difficult. Like the questions were very difficult. They were mentally challenging, but I think they were difficult in a good way. In that you knew that you have the tools and the skills needed to solve the question, but you don't really know how to solve it. So, like the three hours is literally just you trying to think about how to solve the question and not worrying about whether you know something or not which is really, really enjoyable because like, it just focuses your effort on the problem solving. Yeah, which is something that I really enjoy doing. Yeah. So the, the CSAT was a written test that you did on your own between sending your application paperwork and actually speaking with the interviewers, right? Yeah. Uh, now after the CSAT, you then spoke with me and another colleague. I did. On video, like now. Uh, yeah. Well, not quite like now, because I'm not giving <laughs> <laughs> you any, any difficult questions. Uh, but uh, did you experience a lot of pressure during the, the video part, during, during actually interview, face-to-face -face interview? Uh, how, how did you handle that situation? Yeah, I think I was definitely nervous, especially in the beginning, because I didn't really know what to expect. But after that, like when you started actually doing the math and like thinking about the question, I think that's when I started getting into the mood and like just focusing on the question itself and like putting all of my focus on how to solve this question that's in front of me. So you stop worrying about the interview itself and just start worrying about how you can solve the question, which is like much more fun, I think. Like when you actually manage to solve it, you feel really, really happy, yeah. So uh, if you had already set your mind on Trinity, mm -hmm. if you had had the magic wand to decide for yourself whether Trinity should have the CSAT or not, would you have wanted to have it or not to have it? Definitely have it, I think. Like, don't take it out, please. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. It's a good opportunity. And the questions are really fun. They're mentally stimulating, but in a good way. So I think overall, I had a really positive experience with the CSAT. I'm not sure if others feel the same, but for me, at least, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so, uh, and to people who are watching us, I'm not bribing her. <laughs> and and no. I, have, I have no carrot to offer because she's already got the acceptance letter. So it's not like she has to please me by saying what I want. So yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I, really, I really did enjoy it. Yeah, it, it was very, carefully selected questions or carefully designed questions. That was very nice, I think. Like when you get to the end of it, then you're like, wow, this is such a clever question. Yeah, that, that's what I felt at least, yeah. Well, that, that, that's good to hear. And it's certainly, it's certainly um, a big satisfaction for us to see the mental process of 
a clever candidate going through something. Ah, this is difficult. But suddenly, light bulb goes off. Oh, yes, that's how I do it. And when, when one of you does that, it, it's really a good feeling for us as well. <laughs> if, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and um, yeah, in the interview, we try to ask you something that's a bit harder than what you showed you could already do. Mm. So yeah. that we, we push you to see where your limits are, because uh, that's the interesting part. Uh, and help you do more than you thought you could do. Yeah, I definitely felt that. Yeah. Yeah. So did, did you, once we switched off the, the Zoom call uh, and we moved on to the next candidate and you finally ah, <laughs> relaxed like that, did you have the feeling that you had done well? Um, actually, the first thing I did was text my parents and my friends about the question that was asked during the interview. <laughs> I, just thought, I was like, oh my God, this is such a nice question. I'm like, oh, I didn't think of that. Like, can you believe this was how the question was raised? Things like that. Yeah, but then as I thought about it, like I, I was like basically really happy about the question, not about my performance. And then like, but as I thought about it, I kind of like thought about, oh, maybe I should have said that or like, oh, I made a mistake there or I could have been a bit faster over here. Things like that, which kind of made me a bit more insecure and a bit less kind of pleased with my performance. But in the end, I think it turned out all right. It turned out well. So like, I think you can't really judge how well you did in an interview. And all that matters is you had fun, the questions were interesting, I think, yeah. So there was quite a bit of a wait because of various administrative reasons uh, between the day you did the interview and the day you received uh, the letter, right? Yeah. So can you just uh, tell me how it happened that, you know, you get this thing in the post, you know, oh, what's it gonna be? You open, <laughs> just tell me how it was. Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a bit of a unique experience, actually, because I was sitting in my maths class and actually the person sitting next to me also applied to Trinity Computer Science. So like the both of us was just sitting there waiting and like I had do not disturb on because I didn't want to see my results right until like I was in break or alone or something like that. Oh, so yeah. this was not a paper letter. You were, no, no, we were waiting for the email. Yeah, the paper letter came a few days later. Yeah. And then he, he received his notification and I couldn't wait anymore. I was like, oh my God, like my result must have come up and was C. So I opened my email and there was off a letter. So at that moment, I was like relieved and happy at the same time. Yeah, it was just a great feeling, I think. Yeah. Did your friend also get it? Yes, he did. Wow, impressive. Yeah, we'll be seeing each other for the next Three years, maybe. Yeah. You wanted to be in a, in, in a big place with a friend, and you already had the friend from school. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So we'll be meeting a lot more interesting people at Trinity. Oh, yes, absolutely. Worked it. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what, what's the thing that you, you, you look forward the most uh, to about uh, going to Cambridge? Definitely the people. Yeah. So, like, I just really want to be able to collaborate on projects with other people discuss interesting topics so like you know doing doing cool programming things with the people at Cambridge because everyone's so smart everyone's so passionate about the subject and have so much to input and like I just think Cambridge is a place where cool things happen and I want to be a part of it yeah absolutely so yes. Yeah. yes so I think you told me that you had also watched some videos on this channel before coming how did you discover it um i think it was probably through um trinity's computer science website actually where like your your video and your channel was featured on the website sure. yeah i wasn't really planning to apply to trinity at that point i was just looking through the different colleges but then like i stumbled upon your channel and i watched some of the videos and like trinity strikes me as one of the but at least your attitude i think towards like being welcome being diverse and striving towards you know um equal opportunity for everyone. I think it's something that really appealed to me and I felt that I would feel safe in this Excuse environment. Me. Sorry. Sorry, do you mind if I just yeah, take Yes, I do, from Dr. Aiden. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, um, where did I stop? Ah, uh, yes, your, your videos. Yeah, so, like, it just felt like I would be welcome over here and that I would be secure and happy in a place with 
people that are from all backgrounds and like all genders, all races, things like that. So I just felt like it would be welcoming. And so I applied, really, yeah. Well, you are definitely most welcome. And, and I want you to give me some advice and maybe give some other people some advice. I, I want some advice on what should I do to dispel some myths that people have that Cambridge will only take, you know, rich white boys kind of stuff. Um, because it's not true. Mm. I don't care if someone is a, a rich white boy or not. I just care that they're smart, like, like you were. Uh, and so how do, can you suggest to me what should I do to make people stop believing these falsehoods? And the second thing, the second piece of advice is you can speak directly, now that you're on camera, you can speak directly to people uh, in, in the position you were a year ago and say, look, or, 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 or five years ago for that matter, you know, just think seriously that you can make it because you can make it. Well, I mean, what's your advice to your younger self? Or to... Mm, well, to my younger self, it would definitely be just try, really. Nothing's stopping you from trying. Like just because other people are applying doesn't mean that you can't apply. So all you can do is just believe in your own interest, believe in your own ability and believe in things will work out for you. And like, even if you don't get in, even if you end up going somewhere else, you still not, like it doesn't stop you from pursuing your interests. So if you're interested in computer science, if that's what you really, really want to do, then just try, really, just continue on that path and you will reach good places. Yeah, yeah. And I think for, for you, my advice would be, I think what you're doing right now is really, really good because I'm obviously a, a benefactor of your efforts, right? So I saw your videos and um, I decided to apply to Trinity Computer Science. And I, I'm not sure if I would have otherwise, actually. But yeah, so I think um, as long as you keep, doing what you're doing and what you're doing right now is already a really, really good job. So yeah, that, that's great, I think. Yes, yeah. Well, thank you <laughs> for that. Thank you especially <laughs> for, for helping out with this because I, I can't do it without uh, volunteers like you who actually come on the channel to say interesting things about uh, how it was for them. So uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm really honored to be able to come here and speak right. to you and to everyone, yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person. <laughs> <laughs>